Matthew 6, 26 to 33. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not, not much more valuable than they? Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the fields grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the fields, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Our next reading is from Ephesians 6.10-18. to 18. Finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God, so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our, strug our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled round your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Thank you, Brian. We give thanks to God for His Word. So today we come to the end of our series of, that we've been doing, looking at righteousness. And my prayer is that through these past six weeks, and including today being the seventh, that maybe you've, you've learnt a little bit more about what righteousness is and how it impacts your life. Now we've... We've looked at righteousness versus self-righteousness. We've, uh, we've seen the difference between righteousness and holiness. We've looked at what it means to live for righteousness and how to pursue that righteousness. And then what it means to have our, our sin imputed to Jesus and Jesus' righteousness imputed onto us. And then last week it was all about those weapons of righteousness. And remember, righteousness is that condition of being acceptable to God as made possible by God. And our acceptability to and, and of, uh, by God is not made possible through anything that we do. It's not our works, not our deeds, not our actions, but solely on what God has done for us through His Son, Jesus Christ. That is the only way. Do you remember last week I had up on the screen about the, the, um, how weapons of war had changed over the years? So too has the protection changed over the years. You can have a look at the, what this is. You know, you start off, the, the guy on the, le on the left there is a Viking. Okay. And do you know with leather and, a, and an axe and a, a tin can on his head sort of thing? And then you move across, you've got those really silly uniforms that stuck out like sore thumbs on the battlefield, you know, all these bright colors, and then moving across and tam to camouflage. And now this guy at the bottom here on the right, he looks like something out of a science fiction because technology has come so far that they're, they're wired up to, to all sorts of things. And it's changed. The, the, weapon, the, the way that we've, we dress in going to battle has changed over the years, and the protection has changed. And I'm sure from those early days of, of sticks and stones and clubs, 
man thought to himself, he said, hey, there must be a way of protecting myself from, from getting hurt, from being clobbered by the, by the club or being hit by a stone or whacked by a stick. There must be something that I can put on myself to cover myself and protect me from all these things. And then, of course, you know, necessity is the mother of all inventions. Then it starts coming along with all those bits of armor as they put on. Maybe it was a, a, a piece of bark or something, a piece of wood to start off with. And uh, I'm, I'm thinking, my mind is thinking comedy now and comic, you know, chain mail. But way back when, you know, maybe half a coconut on his head or something, you know, that sort of thing. But yes, it's evolved over time until we get to this science fiction looking thing today. And I'm sure that in Sunday school, um, you've, you learnt about the armor of God. You learnt about all, all the bits of the armor and, and what they were and what their purposes were. And last week, as we were looking at the weapons of righteousness, we looked in particular at the shield of faith to do what with? What did we use the shield of faith for? To extinguish the flaming arrows of the evil one. And then there was the sword of the Spirit in the other hand. And what is that? That's the Word of God. The Word of God. And the Word of God is used to both protect and to attack. To attack and defend. And now I also mentioned that we are in a battle. It's not a case of we're just sitting there with armor on, but we're actually in a battle. And sometimes that battle is obvious. It's really obvious. You know, we feel like we're being attacked on every single side. Nothing's going right. And, and we're facing hardship and we're facing suffering the whole time as we're fighting this battle. But then other times, life is, is pretty good. And it's easy to forget that there is actually this spiritual battle going on. This spiritual battle that's being fought in the heavenly realms. And what is this battle being fought over? You and me. About us. But it's not just about us. We are also part of that battle. We're also part of that battle. And the good news is that we're not left alone to fight the battle on our own. God gives us that spiritual armor. And part of that armor is the breastplate of righteousness. But before we, we look at that, at the, bless, the breastplate of righteousness, let's just remind ourselves again of, of this battle and what our role in this battle is. I just want to read again Ephesians 6, verse 10 to 13, where Paul says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Not to collapse in a pile exhausted, but to stand. Where Paul wrote this letter to the church in Ephesus, he was under arrest at that time. And uh, there's probably no reason not to believe that he took his inspiration for, for writing this passage on the armor of God from the Roman soldiers that were around him, guarding him. I have to wonder that if he didn't talk to the Roman guards, asking them about their, the, the weapon, the, 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 the armor that they were wearing, you know, asking, you know, how do you put it on? What do you put, put on first? Show me your helmet. I want to see what it does. How does it protect you? How does this breastplate fit together? Let me look at your sheet and done that, just to get a, a deeper understanding so that he could write these, these inspired words about what the armor is for us. But did you know that this in Ephesians chapter 6 is not the only place that the breastplate is mentioned? There are other places. And if we turn to Isaiah 59, verse 15 to 17, we see the first time that the breastplate of righteousness is mentioned. And people and scholars and theologians believe that these verses are actually talking about the spiritual reign of Christ. And I'll read it to you. Truth is nowhere to be found, and whoever shuns evil becomes a prey. 
The Lord looked and was displeased that there was no justice. He saw there was no, that there was no one. He was appalled that there was no one to intervene. So his own arm worked salvation for him, and his own righteousness sustained him. He put on righteousness as his breastplate and the helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the garments of vengeance and wrapped himself in zeal in a cloak. Talking about Christ. Putting on that breastplate of righteousness, that, that helmet of salvation and those garments of vengeance. And then Paul also talks again, not just in Ephesians, but in 1 Thessalonians chapter 8. He mentions the breastplate. He says, but since we belong to the day, let us be self-controlled, putting on faith and love as a breastplate. Putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. So he is, he's encouraging us to, to use faith and love as a breastplate. Now it ties up with righteousness. So why does Paul call the the so why does Paul call this, this piece of armor that we're to put on the breastplate of righteousness there in Ephesians chapter 6? Well, if we don't protect ourselves with righteousness, we open ourselves up to attack from the enemy. And when we're, when we're open to those attacks, we can so easily fall back into the patterns of sin. And being a part of being righteous means that we need to obey God's commandments and, and live in a way that is honorable to him. And in our call to worship this morning in Psalm 106, verse 3 says, How blessed are those who keep justice, who practice righteousness all the time. Not just when they're with their friends, or when they're in the church circles, but who practice righteousness at all times. But unfortunately, our sinful nature often gets in the way of, of living an upright life. You know, it's when we decide to live based on our own desires rather than, than God's. It's when we make those decisions ourselves that we, that we open ourselves up, that, uh, that we allow those decisions uh, that are harmful to our, not only ourselves but to others as well. Paul talks about it in Romans 8 verse 6. He says, The mind of sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. So how does this blessed breastplate of righteousness protect us? What is its function? Well, in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, Paul makes another comparison to the Christian life. He writes in verses 3 to 5, he says, For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And then in this passage here, the enemy of, enemies of, of the Christian that Paul describes here are numerous. And they could come to us unexpectedly as well. Paul lists arguments. Every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God and the need that we have to take every thought captive. These are the things that we can encounter in everyday life. It's just as we're going through the day. And it's the breastplate of righteousness. It's that breastplate that is our one primary defense against the, the unexpected and these dangerous intrusions that want to come into our lives. But how effective or how important is this breastplate of righteousness? Well, in Proverbs 11, verse 4 to 6, God promises great rewards to those who follow the path of righteousness. It's written, Wealth is worthless in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivers from death. The righteousness of the, uh, the, righteousness of the blameless make a straight way for them, but the wicked are brought down by their own wickedness. The righteousness of the upright delivers them, but the unfaithful are trapped by evil desires. Notice how important righteousness is there. Not our own doing, nothing that we have, but righteousness. The righteousness of 
how do we put on this, this breastplate of righteousness every day? Well, I can expect, I expect that it's sort of imagined, uh, it's a difficult to imagine trying to put on this, this breastplate of righteousness. Yet it's something that we've got to do every single day. We can put on the breastplate of righteousness by seeking out God and His righteousness as well as obeying Him. Jesus tells us in Matthew 6 verse 33, which we read this morning, but seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and then all these other things will be given to you as well. What Jesus is telling us here is that we need to seek Him. We need to seek His kingdom. We need to seek His righteousness more than we need to seek out anything else in life, such as food and shelter or clothing. Because if you look in the preceding verses, in verse 26 to 32, God knows that we, that we need all these things. He knows that we need them. Yet we've got to seek out Him, His righteousness, above everything else. That should be our priority. Because when we seek after God and His righteousness, it's then that we're going to find the delight and the joy in the things that, br that bring Him delight and joy. In other words, our minds and our hearts will be to reflect the mind and the heart of God as we constantly seek out Him and His righteousness. And when we're doing that, we're putting on the breastplate of righteousness and we're truly following God and His direction. And we're constantly, and as we're constantly going out and, see, and seeking for God and His righteousness, it's going to cause that breastplate of righteousness that we're wearing to grow stronger, to become more effective, to become sturdier. But the moment we stop seeking God's righteousness, the moment we stop seeking out God, we become exposed again to those risks of, of Satan trying to attack us with his lies and his threats. Because no longer are we guarded by the righteousness of God. Putting on the breastplate of righteousness can, you know, each day it, it can be a difficult thing. Yet we must keep putting it on as part of our spiritual armor to protect us from the, dev the devil's schemes. Because in a similar way with a soldier's physical armor, if his breastplate is not worn properly, He's going to have problems. And then this, it's the same for us. If we're not wearing that blessed breastplate of righteousness correctly, we're going to land up having problems as well. We're going to have to face the enemy without it. We're going to have to face the enemy in our own strength. And can we? No. So easily when the enemy comes. You see, because the, the breastplate protected the heart of the soldier who wore it. And in the same way, the breastplate of righteousness protects our spiritual heart. And when we're not wearing it, our hearts are open to any sort of spiritual attack that, they may, that may come. Let's look again at verse 14 of Ephesians 6, where Paul tells his readers to stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist and the breastplate of righteousness in place. So because we've got, the, we've got to put on the breastplate of righteousness. And of course, all the other bits of armor as well. But we're called here to put on the, the breastplate of righteousness so that we can stand firm against the attacks of the evil one. And how do we do that? How do we, how do we fight in a realm that we, that we can't see physically or, or spiritually. <laughs> How do we fight those attacks when we, we can't see them, when they're not visible to us? Well, we sink into the righteousness of God. We sink into the righteousness of Christ and, and the other armor that God has given to us. And we pray. And we pray with confidence we pray from a position of victory because we remember that we're united with Christ in his death. We're one with him. And because Christ rose from the dead, we are victorious as well. And Paul continues in verse 18 of Ephesians 6. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying 
for all the saints. Prayer is important. Prayer is important. And if you don't know what to pray, look at the weapon in your hand. What's the weapon you've got in your hand? God's Word. The sword of the Spirit. Open your Bible and, and pray Scripture. And if you don't really know what to pray, open in the Psalms. Many of the Psalms are prayers that, that people have prayed when they were in times of trouble. Lord, help me. Bring me out of this situation. Lord, give me strength. And by the end of the Psalm, there's this, this cry and this, of joy where the Lord has, has stepped in and protected and taken out of, of, the, of the battle there. So we have to make an intentional choice each day. We've got to make an intentional choice each day to put on this armor of God, the full armor, and that includes the breastplate, the breastplate of righteousness. Remember, you've got to put on the belt of truth first before you put on the breastplate of righteousness because it's, it's vital for us to know and to be, be knowledgeable of the truths of God. Because without the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness is going to fall off. It's not going to be as strong. Because it's that belt of truth that holds it there. Seeking out God and His righteousness is how you can put on the, the, that breastplate of righteousness every single day of your life. And the more that you, you practice putting, putting it on every single day, the better you will get at combating the devil and his attacks. You've got to remind yourself of God's promises and trust that he, that he can help you. Not that he might, but that he can help you as you put on his, his full armor every single day. Because it's without a doubt that Satan is, is constantly trying to trip us up. He's trying to, constantly trying to get us to sin and to disobey God. Yet we don't have to give in and give him the pleasure of watching us fall if we're wearing the breastplate of righteousness. So instead, put on that full armor of God and take your stand against the devil in his schemes. Amen. This, I'm going to read a prayer now that I found. It's a, titled, A Prayer for the Protection of the Breastplate of Righteousness. If you'd like a copy of it, I can WhatsApp it to you afterwards. But let's pray this. Heavenly Father, no one is righteous, not one. But you have given us the gift of righteousness to follow the path that you have set before us and to avoid the snares of temptation and sin set up by the devil. Help me to pursue you today and every day. Whenever I encounter temptation, I know from your word in 1 Corinthians 10.13 that you will help me find a way out. Steer me away from situations or places which may tempt me more to sin. And when I am tempted, remind me of your goodness and that you alone are the way of life. No matter what these temptations may promise, they cannot promise me eternal life joy or love, which comes from you alone. Arm me with the breastplate of righteousness today and every day, so that I may be ready when Satan unleashes his heavy torrents of blows on the battlefield. Amen. That's the sort of prayer you can pray every morning. And not to just to in vain repetition, but to really mean it. Lord, I want that breastplate of righteousness every day. I want your full armor on every single day.